the real challenge that we're seeing is that because of this sedentary behavior, that's contributing to our overall health. And so we're looking at ways to bring more activity, more movement back into our day. Walk Kansas, a K-State Research and Extension Health initiative that encourages people to be more physically active, begins March 15th. Each six-member team picks one of three challenges as a goal for the eight-week program. Regardless of which challenge a team selects, meeting the minimum physical activity requirement will help improve their overall health. In addition, this year's Walk Kansas program is incorporating information on blue zones, regions around the world where people live much longer than average. On today's Sound Living, the benefits of focusing on your health. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. K-State Research and Extension Northeast Area Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist and State Coordinator of WAC Kansas, Sherilyn Jackson, discusses the health benefits of the program as well as how it helps participants make a healthy lifestyle change. Sherilyn, it won't be that long. We'll be gearing up for another WAC Kansas. Actually, we're kind of gearing up now because the things that people can be thinking about are getting their teams lined up. That's right. It's going to be here before we know it. I'm I'm uh, really getting excited, too, for Watt, Kansas this year. But, yeah, time to be getting your team formed and think about, you know, putting some thought into who can, can be part of that team that can help motivate and support you, too. And that's uh, another another thing we're going to talk about more this year. This is a six-member team, so you need some coworkers or some friends. And that's probably where most of this participation comes from? A lot of our teams form at workplaces. And people who spend a fair amount of time with each other, that makes perfect sense. So workplace teams are quite popular, but also teams that include friends, family, even people who are part of a faith-based group together or community organization. And the other really neat thing about Walk Kansas is they don't have to live in Kansas. They can be, we have people participate that live all over the world. Yeah, because they can enter their miles from anywhere. That's right. And it's really the technology that connects us. So if you have a, a friend, a family member overseas somewhere in another state, I have another county, whatever it might be, consider them as part of your team. And employers are being a little bit more lenient with this, too. They're encouraging their employees to get out and be active. It makes perfect sense to do that because people that are more active, that are healthier, are going to be more productive and more enjoyable employees to have around. And so there's, it's a real win-win for everyone. I mentioned miles, but we're really counting minutes. We're counting minutes. The Physical activity guidelines for Americans is based on minutes, and that's what our program is based on. And so they recommend that you have a minimum of two and a half hours of physical activity per week. That's moderate activity, again, where you can just barely carry on a conversation with somebody while you're doing that activity. But this year, we're going to really talk about a variety of activities, all kinds of activities that that are part of a healthful lifestyle. So while we're tracking that particular type of activity for Walk Kansas, we're really emphasizing and encouraging moving throughout the day, just moving naturally throughout the day. That's kind of important because a lot of research right now shows the importance of just getting up and constantly moving or at least moving every hour. That's right, at least every hour. And some will say even every 30 minutes, just to move around a little bit. You know, I think about When we used to tell kids to sit still, it's really the opposite now. The more you wiggle around and move around, is it's really better, better for your body, and it helps stimulate your brain and and your thought process as well. Well, It's important now, too, because we are so sedentary, especially at work. A lot of what we do is now just done on one screen, one computer. That's right. We, as Americans, have done a really good job of engineering physical activity out of our workday and making everything physically easier. And so the real challenge that we're seeing is that because of this sedentary behavior, that's contributing to our overall health. And so we're looking at ways to bring more activity, more movement back into our day. Talk a little bit about how Walk Kansas works. I know that they pick what goal they want to try and meet. Right. Again, it's a team-based program. So there are six people who form that team, and together they make a decision about how, how much activity they want to get. And so there's really three challenges that they can work toward, and they need to pick one of those. One of our Missouri colleagues often says this about physical activity. He says, some is better than none, 
more is better than some, and too much is hard to get. So if you keep that in mind, but you want to challenge yourself, but you want that goal to be realistic because you want to be able to actually reach that goal. So challenge one requires the team members to meet that minimum goal of physical activity that we talked about, that 30 minutes, about five days a week. Challenge number one will take the team on a trail that's about 480 miles long. And that particular trail also introduces them to the Eight Wonders of Kansas. Challenge two will take the team on a trail that's about 768 miles long. And that means that each person has to log about four hours of moderate activity per week. And then the longest trail is 1,152 miles. And that requires a six hour of moderate activity commitment from each team member. So just based on what your goals are, what you want to reach toward, and if you're completely new, if you haven't been doing any kind of regular activity at all, challenge one is probably where you want to start. We have people of all different levels of physical abilities that participate in Walk Kansas, and we really want to target those people who consider themselves to be couch potatoes and not getting a lot of activity. That's where we really want to motivate people to get up and start being more active. You have some multi-generational teams as well, anywhere from five years old to 90 years old. And and they're doing this as kind of a family activity. We have a lot of multi-generational teams. And some of the neatest stories, impact stories come from, from those experiences and how motivating that oldest family member can be. Now, they might not be able to to reach the same goal. Again, this is a team commitment. So if somebody has a physical limitation or Um, is just really new to physical activity, then another team member can help pick up some of that slack. But everybody needs to contribute in some way. And so, yeah, those multi-generational teams are really neat. And it's really kind of an internal competition. It's not an overall competition. You're not competing against any other team out there. It's just trying to meet that goal that you've set. It's meeting the goal, right. That's what we're really trying to focus on. You mentioned that you're kind of putting a little bit more emphasis on just movement. How is that going to be counted? Will it still be kind of in the 10-minute segments, or are you making some adjustments to that? Well, the new newly revised physical activity guidelines no longer include that requirement. So it's any type of moderate activity. It doesn't have to be 10 consecutive minutes. Anything can be counted. But it really is good to shoot for that, though, if you can, to build up to a little bit more endurance that way and to do it for a longer period of time. Again, it's just about where people start out and what they're able to accomplish and what they're comfortable doing. And then throughout the eight-week period, they're going to see that their overall fitness improves and they need to keep challenging themselves a little bit more. And that's where through our newsletters and our online messaging and that kind of thing is kind of prompting them to do that. Pretty common to start out slow and then by week four, week five, you're going a little bit farther, week six, a little bit farther. And then all of a sudden you get to week eight and it seems like you've accomplished your goal in very little effort. Right. Over time, you'll find that you can walk that same distance much more quickly and more easily. So then it's time to maybe try a new trail that has some hills. Maybe it's adding a little more length to your trail, your walking trail, or whatever kind of activity you choose. It doesn't have to be just walking, just any kind of activity that's going to elevate your heart rate a bit. You mentioned the newsletters, and that's another aspect of this, is just the informational component. Yes, and this year we're, I think, ramping that up just a bit. I'm really excited that we're focusing our messages through the newsletters, not only on physical activity and healthy eating, but even more specifically on the shared traits of people who live in what we call Blue Zones communities. And these are places across the world where people live measurably longer and healthier lives. And research has shown what common traits that these people have. There's nine healthy lifestyle habits that they share. And we're going to explore these through Walk Kansas and each one of the newsletters. And Moving Naturally is one of those. And there's several that focus on healthy eating And we're going to also, through the newsletter messages and through programming the agents are doing locally, really look at incorporating more of a Mediterranean eating style. Not necessarily those particular foods, but it's more of a plant focus. Not that they don't eat meat, but they eat a lot more plants than we do. And so a lot of our information is going to focus on that, a lot of new recipes to try, that type of thing. Well, this is billed as a health initiative. It's not a diet campaign. It's nothing along those lines. But it is something that you will notice a difference if you, for instance, are tracking your fruits and vegetables like you'd like people right. to do. You'll notice a difference probably in your weight. Yes. I mean, there are lots of spinoffs from that. And certainly 
perhaps losing weight or maintaining weight is definitely one of those. We see a lot of other benefits, too, in mental health and also your ability to focus, to concentrate, to be more productive. People report how they're happier, more energetic. There are a lot of things that are part of this. And the lifestyle traits shared by the people who live in the Blue Zones communities uh, really focus on things like they have a, a sense of purpose. They are very contributing members in their community. They feel a sense of belonging. All those kinds of things are things that we'll look at and encourage people to maybe pick one of those Blue Zone shared traits or habits and focus on that in addition to the movement and the healthy eating components. Socialization is part of that. And that's really part of what Walk Kansas is all about. You don't have to walk as a team. That's not required. But there is that kind of sharedness, the the connectedness. So Mm -hmm. that also plays into it. Definitely. We already have a team concept in place. This is just going to strengthen that and help those team members be more supportive and helpful to each other and forming that connection. You'll also have some information about strength training. Strength training is a very vital part of being physically active. And as we get older, that becomes so much more important. And so there are a lot of resources on our website, which is walkkansas.org, that show some videos that show how to do strength training exercises. We'll have more information shared through the online system for participants on you know, what are some just good basic total body strengthening exercises that you need to be doing? And lots of resources there. But again, it's giving a lot of information, a lot of support. And then maybe people want to take it a step further and join a class in their community or whatever their goals might be. But um, hopefully this will support them toward initiating and keeping some healthy lifestyle habits. Well, that's kind of the whole key, isn't it, is to do this for eight weeks, find out that it's something that you can do, something that you probably like to do, I think you'll discover, and it's something that they can continue then on their own. That is really the goal. We don't want this to just be something you do for eight weeks. We have a program in place for eight weeks because that gives you a good solid foundation for developing a healthy lifestyle habit, but it's definitely not the goal of the program is we want those to continue. We want this to be long-term. We've been doing Walk Kansas since 2001 as a statewide program, and we get a a fair number of people that repeat just because they feel like, gosh, the winter months are winding down and and I want to get outside or I feel energized because spring is coming. And this is a way to kind of jumpstart and remind them again of some of the healthy habits they know about but just aren't practicing. And that's great. And we welcome repeat Folks, we also welcome people new to Walk Kansas, and that's why we have a little different slant or focus each year to change up the materials, give them new information, because we do want to, again, bring people back in and get them refocused. Well, it's nice because it is something that you can ease into, and it is that, like you say, that reminder that it's time to get up and get moving again. Maybe I was a little too sedentary over the holidays, and Mm -hmm. now it's a new year and things are moving forward. And this is really a great way to kind of kick that into high gear. It is. And then we do have a couple of new things that we're incorporating this year through our online system, just a couple of new changes. But also we have a new Walk Kansas app that'll be available. The important thing is that you keep a record of what you're doing so that you know, whether it just simply means writing it down on a calendar. You know, I did 20 minutes of moderate activity on that day. Or You have a fitness tracker, and you can integrate it through that. It doesn't matter to us. It's just so that you are aware of what you're doing, and and you're working toward that goal to be more physically active. Now, this is basically done through counties that are participating, or is this all done online now? The local extension agent is in charge of their program, and so we provide the, the basics, the basic information, and then each local program The agent enhances that in their own way, and oftentimes they offer group walking opportunities or some, I know a number of them are planning some actual classes on how to make foods that are part of the Mediterranean eating style and introduce them to some new techniques and focus on nutritious meal planning, that kind of thing. Some of them do poker walks that are really fun ways to get people out and walking. It looks a little different in every county across the state, which is what's really exciting to me. That's K-State Research and Extension, Northeast Area Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist and State Coordinator of Walk Kansas, Sherilyn Jackson. Again, this year's challenge starts March 15th and runs through May 9th. For more information on Walk Kansas, including how to register your six-member team, contact the county or district extension office serving your area or visit walkkansas.org. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program 
produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.